Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome back to my Open TTD Let's Play. We're doing the Series 6 Quad UK Challenge, and whilst I'm partway through it myself, it's time to take a little break and have a look at your games, because I invited you guys to play along with me. Now if you want to play along, you can do, there's still time. Just go along to the first episode in this playlist, and the beginning of that episode tells you how you can play along too. But these are some submissions from you guys who have been playing along. I really look forward to this because I like to see how people do things differently and I like to learn uh, what's going on and and sometimes I can offer advice to some people what things they might consider to improve things and other times I learn stuff. It's always a bit of an adventure. So let's crack on with our first submission today. Now before we crack on with this first one, I will just say a quick thank you to everybody who's playing along, taking part, getting involved with the Discord chat, and generally having fun in this series. It means a lot to me that you're doing that, and thank you to everybody who submitted their 1980 game saves. Now I won't have the opportunity to show them all here, but I will at least take a look at them all, and it is fantastic to see them. First up, we're looking at this one, Relogistics. Now this is a 1980 save, they're all 1980 saves. And let's just pause the game a moment. At this moment in time, the bank balance is looking quite nice with 5 million in the bank. And if we have a look at the company details here, we can see the company value is about 35 million. So obviously this company is doing quite well. We can see that they have got rail and road pieces, they've done some water tiles, we're not really seeing anything in terms of air travel. Let's have a look at the finances, and we can see here that we've got quite good train income, road income, no aircraft, and a little bit of ships. And you can see their infrastructure is costing them around 28 million a year. So let's have a quick look at the challenges. Over to Exeter first, and we can see that Exeter is growing quite nicely with 38,000 people. That's roughly what we're doing in my Let's Play. I am probably a little bit behind where I think I should be. Here it's a bit weird though, because I'm not seeing any manual expansion of roads, which we know makes the town grow faster, and also the land leveling hasn't been done around the um, around the edge of the city here. Now land leveling I don't think is important, but it can make it easier if you want to expand your roads out. So it's interesting to see how it's grown really well without those. Now, what else is going on? Well, if we come right across the country, we've got the Whole Beach Factory Challenge. If we have a look at Whole Beach Factory, we can see here it's just doing about 1,600 crates of goods a month, and we've got a few stations nearby. And to be honest, it's, it's, you know, it, there's nothing crazy different about what's going on here. One thing that's interesting to me is the goods out is quite small. Yes, look at this. A lot of goods waiting to be shifted and the ratings, the ratings are actually quite good despite there being a lot of goods there. So maybe there's been a change recently. Let's see how far those goods have been taken. Okay, so it looks like the choice has been made here to take these all the way down to London. We've got London North where the goods are coming in and we've got London's King's Cross. Now this is what I wanted to do with a, uh, one of my London stations and I never really got around to it, is to use the alternate tile set and just make it look really nice. You get all the passengers on there and the bridges going over. This is brilliant use of that. Right? It's really nice to see. And we can see that we've got optional double depots and nice little bit of merging going on with good distances. I don't know how long the trains are. Let's have a look at what the train length is. Ooh, that looks to be about eight train length to me, I think. And it looks like, well, you've left a good uh, length of 10 there before your exit junction and your signal so there's plenty of space that's that is good oh Stevenage Woods again done with the new station tiles that we've been using in this series uh, Peterborough West looking different and I actually come to think of it I think Peterborough looks a little bit like that so it's an interesting design choice and then you do you that's I think as far as you went with that line so you've done something similar to me, but not everything. And there's actually quite a lot of different things going on here. What's all this? What we've got around here? So Manchester has a passenger network, but it comes out this way, and it looks like it heads... Oh, heads over to Liverpool. Liverpool's grown quite nicely here for you as well. 
You can see some of the junction work that's been going on here. Nice and clean, keeping it simple. Wide um, corners for the most part. We've got a little bit of tight cornering here, but sometimes you just can't avoid it to fit it in where you want everything. And a bit of a tight cornering there, so trains can turn and come round and through. It's 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 done quite well. I mean, if you can reduce the tight corners here, um, it would improve things ever so slightly. But I don't think it's going to make a massive difference to your mar uh, to like your margins. So let's have a look at the game settings and do uh, br eight br br breakdowns. Break vehicle. Uh, let's see. Vehicle breakdowns are set to normal, so you haven't turned them off, which is one thing that some people have done, and one th and uh, some people haven't done. There's a bit of a contention about what's going on. Now, one thing that you have done that I haven't done is come up into the north here, and you've got railway lines uh, through Edinburgh, uh, Dunblane, and Glasgow, and you've done really well to do that, and you've actually come round to Kilmarnock as well. Uh, I've been round there, actually. I seem to remember being in this part of the country before. Definitely been to Glasgow, because that's where I went to watch Robot Wars being made. And I've not been up there to Dunblane Stirling. I have been to Edinburgh. I went there um, with the wife. We had a nice little uh, nice time in Edinburgh for a while. And you have also attempted the Highway Highland Challenge. So you've come... Oh, I can see your highway is actually going very similar to what I've got, but it comes out further and goes right up to the coast. And your junctions are similar to mine, but you've used tunnels. I think I used a bridge here. And you are coming... See, this is a bit weird here. Your arrows are the opposite to what I would do. So if you've got vehicles coming in from the sort of south-ish here, you'd have other vehicles joining your road. So then you'd have the vehicles that are going straight on and the vehicles that are come adjoining. Um, and then you'd have them peeling off. So the vehicles that wanted to turn left would have to go past the vehicles that are joining and then going through. So to me, this should be an on. That's just, that's just, to me, this should be an on and this should be an off. Okay, but it's not going to make a massive difference, to be honest. It's just something to bear in mind if you're building one of these sorts of junctions yourself. Think about what order things are going off and on. It's better to peel traffic off and then put traffic on than, than to do it the other way around. And the highway highway challenge, you, you've, you've used a lot of bridges and a few tunnels. Not too dissimilar to myself. And you've gone on to Inverness, but then you've also expanded right over here. Wow, okay, so you've come over to the coast. Oh my goodness, this this expands even more. This is the most amount of road work, a road I've seen in any of these Let's Plays. We've got a nice little junction down here again. This one is the way around that I would do it. So there's a slight bit of inconsistency there, but I like the way that it's just coming into town. Oh, I see Aberdeen coming into Aberdeen. Where does this one go? Okay, right up to this northern point. And we've got railways here as well. So you've managed to cover a lot of the country with your railways. And I think you're doing very well. Junctions are very neat. Um, looks like you've got some shipping going through here as well. Yep, this is where your ships are. They're coming out into this area. You've gone for putting lots and lots of buoys in. Buoys? Buoys? Depends how you pronounce them. And I, it's quite difficult to see between what's the difference between a buoy, a boy, as we say in my my country, and uh, the oil fields. Because at this distance out, the uh, the label pretty much covers most of the oil fields. But uh, very good, very good, nice to see. And um, in some ways, in some ways, not much to say, because you're doing quite well. Um, um, there's nothing that new to me here for me to learn. But uh, also, there's not a lot for me to say about ways that I would improve it. So, um, it's just nice to see. Well, there we go. That's that one. Let's move on to the next one. Next up is this submission from Chris. And we've got Chris Transport. Um, the company value is amazing. Uh, most of that company value actually comes from the cash in the bank. And you've got well over half a billion. 
I can see from this you've got railroad and water tiles going, so I presume if we come over to the money here we won't see any aircraft income. There we go. Somebody else again, not using aircraft. I am considering putting a few aircraft into my Let's Play, but that's only because I feel like I'm being mean that they're being left out more than anything else. Just as, an, as a note, let's see if we can find out if your breakdowns are on or off. You've got breakdown set to normal. That's part of the challenge really here, but some people have chosen to turn it off. And one of the things that I like here is that you've noted your population sizes of Exeter throughout the years. And you know what? 105,000 in Exeter? That's a fantastic amount. You've, you've drowned out nearby villages and you are starting to cause yourself some problems probably and you know what you've done it just by putting in the bare minimum haven't you you've got your five stations where your road vehicles are going around how many road vehicles are you using okay so you do have a few you have what's that six six road vehicles going round and round and round and you've got four thousand passengers waiting uh, more than 4,000 at most of these stations just sat there waiting because you've only got six vehicles in such a densely packed area. But it's done its job. I would say for certain you would have needed to have done some funding on that by doing fund new buildings and do it to get the town to grow every two days. But it is a little bit of one of those things that once it starts growing fast, it will start growing even faster. Looking at your rail network, I can see right away here you've got some forced depots. And maybe in the early days that could have caused some um, routing problems, but as a general rule these days it's fine. Um, in fact, it's really good to have forced de depots when you're playing with breakdowns. And you really get to choose when those trains service, rather than just letting them do it whenever they want. Now you have got some wiggly bits here. So if a train was coming down the line, and it looks like you've gone, what length of train have you gone for? Let's see, uh, two, three, four, five. So these ones are six in length, which means that as a train's coming in, down this way, um, it will wiggle left, and that wiggle won't slow it down. It'll then go into the depot, which will slow it down and come back out again. So if you had the option for these depots to not be forced depots, and I'll just explain that. Uh, let's just unpause for a second. So if we had a piece of track going straight across there, Trains that wanted to go straight through would potentially be slowed down by this wiggle left and the wiggle right. Or should I say, yeah, the wiggle left and the wiggle right. Um, but because you're going into the depots anyway, and that's going to slow the trains down anyway, it doesn't matter. A nice, easy solution for getting your depots in there. I like it. And you've done it regularly throughout your network. And you've the all force depots as well. Now, personally, I don't know if I'd put all of these as force depots, but it certainly means that you are doing well in terms of money. I mean, you're not having breakdowns and things clogging up the network. And you can see there's no like queue of trains on this line just waiting behind each other. They're all flowing through. If we unpause it, they're all either coming in, going out, switching through. You have got some switch tracks here, actually. And I wouldn't have the switch and then a signal here or here because that's going to hide which track is available from this switch um so that's interesting it's it's a very minor thing which you may contend either way so we've got trains going right down to the iron hall iron ore hubs down there we've got the steel plant in the middle here there's actually two steel plants are you using both of them let's have a look at the coverage no you're only using this one in the middle and this is one massive station by the looks of it so looks like you have you used the full station spread i think have you made the station spread bigger than the default of what i set it to no it looks like you're using the full station spread you know uh, oh, i did say it was chris i was gonna say have i said who submitted this yes it was chris chris transport um let's have a look at the overall view of the world Ah, right. Okay, so not so much infrastructure here, but what you have done, you've done well. And there is all oh, the beginnings of Ireland. What have we got here? New Island Challenge, yes. Okay, so we've got one city which you're starting to grow. And you've got, oh my goodness, you actually got a land bridge out uh, with an oil field on it. And then we've got a rail wow that is an interesting rail um, bridge there massive one coming out at hollyhead 
Maybe that's temporary. I don't know. I, I, would be, I wouldn't be surprised if that's permanent. And what else have we got going on around here? Well, like I said, there's not a massive amount of infrastructure, but you've done really well with what you've put in. You make good use of all the lines. They're all very busy all the time. Trains going in, coming out constantly. There's not many lines where you just look and there's just like nothing there, which is absolutely brilliant. Now, I wonder how much you're spending on infrastructure. Look at that. 20 million a year. Eight less than the previous person we saw. So it goes to show to make more use out of your infrastructure you've got can make a very big difference to the bank balance. And by the time that we've gone, we've got, well, what have we done? I think we've done 75, no, maybe 65 years into this challenge? 65, 55 years? Let's call it 50 years to be safe. You know, saving 8 million a year over 50 years, you're going to have a nice bank balance, aren't you? Now, the whole beach factory challenge. Let's see what's going on here. Ooh, nearly 3,000 crates of goods at the moment. And I can see that you've gone for the lots of slightly smaller stations way of doing things at the moment, which is a very good way to manage it. I might go a bit more this way myself rather than having a group of mega stations. Right, it's so the quad challenge. We've got one more challenge to check you out on. Let's go over here and see what Chris has done in the north. So up here in the north, we have uh, the highway. Now, unlike myself and the previous submission, you have chosen to do some uh, going up and down, and you've chosen to do some flattening. And you've done a little bit of flatten down and a little bit of flatten up, a little bit of flatten up and a little bit of flatten down, all the way the, across the challenge. There's the Highland Challenge. Now, you haven't set these to one-way roads. I don't know whether one-way roads would definitely be best for this, but they seem to be okay. I mean, you've got them one way here, but I don't know if vehicles overtake if they are not on one way. Now, they may overtake if it's stopped, but I mean broken down. So we'd have to get a load together and maybe test that with some time. But you've gone up to Inverness for that, and you've got it coming all the way down here. And you've got it going into Glasgow. So you haven't done anything else connected to that. So somewhat similar to me not long ago, you've kept it nice and simple and you've completed that challenge. All right. Okay. Uh, let's just have a quick look around, see what if we can see anything different. So again, the use of force depots. We've got bridges coming out of the stations. I would prefer tunnels because... Um, tunnels you have no maximum speed you can do them right through but it does usually require an extra square or two a length so it, you can save space by using bridges and to be honest if you're using half decent bridges it doesn't matter so if we query this you can see that the rail limit on that bridge is 160 mile an hour and if we come off the query and have a look at the train that just went over that bridge and uh, we've got this vehicle here what's that vehicle information the UU37 diesel let's see what the theory theoretical max speed is for the uu37 diesel 90 okay so the maximum speed of that diesel train is 90 and the bridge can handle 160 so it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things when it would matter is if you managed to get a train that was going faster than 160 and you still had that bridge because then the bridge would be slowing it down so overall this is a very good submission. Uh, I like it. You're doing really well on all the challenges. Uh, better than me in most aspects. But I think the thing that's really helped you here is making use of the infrastructure you've got. You've probably got less tiles than many of the other people that's playing this game. But you're getting more money out of it by having more trains, more services, and passing things around the network. Absolutely fantastic. Right. And the last one for today is above the line submission and you've called your company uh, Ellison and Co now whilst we've got your finances open I can see that you're uh, making your money on your trains you got 15 million in your bank but I've got a funny feeling your company value yeah you got f company value is 18 million so you have invested invested in rail and road pieces um, but obviously not really done a massive amount with the Exeter challenge I suspect you started the Exeter challenge later in the game 
Let's have a look over here near Spalding. We've got the whole beach factory, and it looks like you've been concentrating on this a lot more. You've managed to get the production of goods over a thousand, which is absolutely fantastic. Let's have a look at the way that some of the uh, stations are designed here. So, you've got something that I've not seen before, or not for a long time anyway. You've got an option for trains to come in here. Now, the only possible reason I can think that you have this is room for station expanding. It's an interesting way of keeping it, but could trains potentially go down there if the platforms are full? I I would say that's a possibility. So what you might want to do is, if you are going to lay out the track like that, just make sure there's a gap so trains don't skip the station if it's been a bit busy. Here, again, we've got a similar sort of station set up. It's quite good. And you've got the ability for trains to come off the line and into the depot. Now, how long are these trains? Because your platforms are seven in length. Uh, we've got a train come in here, and it looks like it might be six or seven. If that's the case, then the idea that you've got here of bringing the depot off this, shall we say, main line, is a little bit... It needs expanding to work effectively. Because when a train first starts going into that depot, it starts slowing right down really quickly goes really slow into the depot and as it slows down and goes into the depot the back of the train is still going to be over here on the main line this kind of running in length here needs to be as long as your trains so let's see what this train does it's going to go to a waypoint so it's just going to go straight by that that is an important thing when taking depots off the main line with a side line your runoff uh, going into the depot and really coming out needs to be long enough to hold a train so that's a little improvement that could be made there we've got some interesting junctions here i like the look of these how's that going to oh i see right okay so we've got uh, all these mines and we've got these little almost like mini half clover leaves um i like them i like them a lot um if you've got a train sat here at this red light similar situation though you haven't got a long enough length it depends it's the trade-off because if this is, junction is not that busy then this is going to run smooth it's neat it's easy to maintain and easy to build so it's a, whilst it's not the most efficient design it's a good design it's a good there's nothing there's you you can very easily run a railway with that in there Again here, your run in and run out of your depots needs to be bigger, but you know this line isn't very busy right now. Is it going to be very busy in the future? Would it be worth doing that? I'm not 100% sure. Not 100% sure. And you've got quite a long line that comes all the way up here, and you go past Grimsby, and that's the end of the line for now. Now, if that is what you're in the middle of building, that's cool, but if you're not building this right now, it's nearly always a really good idea just to cap off your your lines by putting a little turnaround on it. Because every now and then, one of the little trains will get lost, and it'll end up coming down this line when it didn't mean to, and that just means it can turn around and it's not going to get stuck there for an eternity. Now, let's see here. Uh, highway Challenge. Looks like to me we haven't taken that on yet. And um, let's have a look at the overall things, overall world map. Here we go. So it looks like you really have been concentrating on your whole beach and you've got this other line up here. So you've got two main lines around there. And you know what? You're doing well. You've got a profitable company. This game is not an easy game. It's um, there's a lot of aspects of this game designed to make you either play differently or maybe challenge yourself in ways that you don't normally do. For example, uh, having breakdowns turned on. Not everybody plays that with that turned on. Another thing is cargo distribution being turned on. That's another consideration that has to be made. Now, I like what you're doing here. You've, you've labelled out where this is going to go and you've got this fantastic little station in here. Would I have put this station a little bit more central if you could? Maybe, but London will expand around that nonetheless and you'll be fine there. So you've got what looks like to be two, uh, an in and an out and an in and an out. So you've got the option for a train to cross over here and come in and then you've got the option for this train to cross over there and go in. Okay. And then this one can, is an out and that's fine. And the same on the out, you've got them uh, able to cross over. 
So whilst this is a good way of doing it, I would have personally kept it as two separate stations, unless you're planning your Exeter trains to be able to then go out to Glasgow, in which case you would need... Hey, Glasgow! You're going to Glasgow from London. That's going to be a big railway line. I was expecting Gla you know, this line to go to maybe somewhere in Wales or maybe up to Manchester or something, but Glasgow, that's ambitious. I'd look forward to seeing that a little bit more in the future. So there we go. A fant Oh, hang on. Speaking of clover leaves, there is a clover leaf. Again, when you're building your clover leaves, a, a good thing to do is leave a gap here on the outside as long as your trains. Because if a train is waiting, because another one's coming down the main line here, and it's waiting at this signal here, then you want it to wait without blocking the line behind it. So in this scenario, with your trains, I think they were six in length, most of them. Let's have a quick look at this one. I'll give it a quick count. Uh, two, three, four, five. Oh no, six. It looks like they're seven. Um, I would have built this slightly bigger to be able to accommodate that so that you could have that uh, coming out probably seven or eight length in the diagonal. So it'd be interesting to see how that goes. Um, you are connected to Bingham and got some road vehicles going. So what's the, you've got a bit of a transfer going on, I see farm into a transfer hmm not a hundred percent sure why you just didn't build the railway line a little bit closer did you want it to match up with the clover leaf that you built hmm interesting to know interesting to know and one other thing as well if you're building two junctions for example we've got this clover leaf junction and we've got this run on junction here it's a good idea if you can to leave a train length between now with these sorts of slip junctions it doesn't matter so much but with some junctions it can actually end up in deadlock. Not here. Here you'd be okay. But it's something to keep in mind. Well, there we go, folks. Um, I hope you've liked my commentary on these submissions. I hope you've liked them being shared with you. I've certainly enjoyed looking at them. We're going to have a look at some more. We are. We're going to have a look at some more next time. And then the time after that, we will... Um, well, uh, what will we do? What are we going to do? I don't know. The time after that, we'll be going back on to what I'm doing. What do I do? Oh, double click. Uh, it's double click now. They changed it, didn't they, in the last uh, last major version. Uh, I think it was 1.11 or maybe 1.10. I can't remember. I lose track. <laughs> track. Well, there we go, folks. Like I said, that's going to be all for now. Uh, keep uh, playing along if you are playing along. If you have got some saves saved up, then keep them nice and safe for me. And I think we may be looking at the viewers' games again in the year 2000. But we will see. Remember to save every five or ten years. Thank you very much for watching. And from me for now, and for the people who submitted their games, thank you and goodbye. <laughs>